So, um, welcome everyone. Um, okay, so welcome everyone. Um, how this is going to go is we are going to explain you everything about MEX, how to apply, what to do. And uh, after we have informed uh, what to do everything, then we will take some questions. And after taking some questions, we are going to explain you about our mentoring program, uh, the MEX mentoring program. And after that, we will take some questions again. Okay, so just be patient right now. And uh, Samriddhi and me will be explaining the um, basic information about MEX and how to apply. This is very important, so pay attention. Okay. Samriddhi, you wanna start? Oh, you can start. It's okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So um, this is uh, the mixed scholarship flyer. And let me tell you something about me and then Samriddhi will introduce herself. My name is Jay and uh, I am doing my bachelor's in computer science uh, from the University of Tokyo. And I am currently on a mixed scholarship, but I got the scholarship for undergraduate as well as master's. So um. I, I have knowledge of both of them and I'm currently studying computer science and programming. Um, okay. Yeah. Hello everyone. My name is Samriddhi. Um, my basic background is I have done my BTEC in civil engineering from SRM University since people are here from Anna University. Um, meanwhile, I've also done some uh, research fellowship programs by IIC Bangalore in IIT Bombay. And uh, after that, I applied for MEC scholarship in 2021. And I uh, arrived in Japan in 2022 as a MEC scholar. And I studied geophysics um masters in geophysics in kyoto university um yes so nice to meet you all yes nice to meet you um so um what are we going to do in this webinar is we are going to clear your doubts we are going to tell you more about the application procedure then we are going to introduce the program and then we are going to uh, basically answer your questions and about other opportunities and other internships in japan so um, starting with what is MEXT, uh, MEXT is basically just a scholarship that is provided by the government of Japan to students all over the world, including India and all other countries as well. So basically you apply for, uh, you apply for the MEX scholarship and you get a monthly stipend and it is a fully funded scholarship. So um, there's no tuition fees and for your living expenses, you get a monthly stipend as uh, Samriddhi has mentioned here about uh, any nationality can apply and international students are invited to study in Japan and it is a fully funded and paid scholarship. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, scholarship benefits, um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain the undergraduate. So if you are applying for undergraduate students, what kind of benefits do you get? First of all, there's no tuition fees. Then you also get um, like flight tickets when you are going to Japan and when you are coming back or the government pays for your flight as well as uh, there's no exam fees, there's no tuition fees. So you do not have to pay for any money related to your institute or your university. Um, you also get a monthly stipend of, if you are applying for an undergraduate, you will get monthly 112,000 yen. How much is that in INR? Maybe 117. Uh, one, one, one oh, lakh. Sorry, yes. 170. It's like I think 70,000. 70, 80,000, yes. Uh, I think it's 70,000 yen, 70,000 Indian rupees uh, per month. And uh, yeah, other than that, you also get a university dorm, which is like much cheaper. So you can save money on rent. Yeah, just adding one thing that this amount is after uh, your tuition fee and everything. So you don't have to pay your tuition fee from this amount. Tuition fee and every exam fee, everything is deducted. And this amount is the amount you get in your bank account every month, which is for your monthly expenses, like buying groceries, paying your phone bills, um, buying things that you want. You can also save from this amount. So I think, and if you get a university dorm, uh, the DOM amount is also deducted from this amount. So you can pretty much save a bit, a, a little bit from here. Yeah. Yeah. And for, for masters, yeah. uh, for masters, the uh, stipend is pretty much the same. Ex uh, everything is the same except the stipend. 
So for undergraduate, you only get 117,000, but for master's, you get 144,000. So that is approximately one, one lakh Indian rupees. So yeah, uh, you can also get some extra funds for your research or things like that, but that depends on person to person, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Living in cities like uh, expensive cities like Osaka, Kyoto, uh, Tokyo, you get an additional two to 3,000 yen. Um, depending on which city you are living in. So yeah. roughly it would be around 1, 1 lakh 40, 46 or 47. And for doctoral students, it's just extra 1 or 2,000 yen. So uh, th again, this amount is up, uh, like after your tuition fee and everything. So this amount is the amount you use to pay your rent and other expenses. Yeah. And by the way, I should mention that the government of Japan recently gave away everybody 70,000 yen, right? Yeah, 70,000 yen because of the hike in um, energy and um, uh, inflation because of the expensive food that we are getting. So in order to benefit that, in order to like help us uh, come out from that extra cost, they have given us like a subsidy of 70,000 yen um, uh, to our bank account, which yeah. is which is we we do get that we we got that for people who are living here since covid they also got like 50000 yen yeah. last year we also got like 30000 yen for the, the gas and uh, electricity and ga like uh, energy bills which was really high because of uh, the war um, the petrol prices and everything was high and this time again we got for the inflation and increasing uh, price in food and everything yeah. else so. so basically you do not have to worry about money is what we are trying to say. Um, okay. Now, yeah. now we'll talk about um, who is eligible. Are you eligible or not? And what kind of MEC scholarship should you apply for? And mm -hmm. what kind of documents you need to submit? What is the procedure? And uh, what is like the how to get selected in the MEC scholarship? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to explain the... Yeah, uh, sure. So... Uh... Usually, like in the introduction, it was mentioned that uh, every year, uh, MEC scholarship opens twice, once in the beginning, that is around April end to May, which is called the embassy recommended track, and one at the end of the year, which is around from October, which is university track. So if you want to apply for MEC scholarship, it is very important to first keep note of these two timelines, and also to understand the difference and also recognize which uh, which method or which track would be suitable for you. So the most common and track here that people usually know is the embassy recommended track. The main difference is um, the main idea of the embassy recommended track is like how MEC scholarship opens for countries which have diplomatic relations with Japan. So this information is given out by the embassy of that country. For example, if you are an Indian, so you have to look at the website of Embassy of Japan in India, and they give out the information about the MEC scholarship is open for the particular year. So here in Embassy recommended recommendation, the embassy shortlists gives out the information about the scholarship, accepts applications, goes through the screening, shortlist students, and then inform the university. So the embassy does most of the shortlisting work. So for that, you need to apply at the embassy or the consulate of your country. And the number of seats are 10 to 12. For uh, so this number of seats is basically uh, a, a global average. So for India, it's about 30 to 35 every year. It can be less, but it depends. 30 to 35 during uh, 2022, there were 33 seats, which includes... Um, people from uh, undergraduate as well as uh, research students. So research students will have like 10, 12, and then undergraduate and COT and other people will have again 10, 10 to 12 seats. And the interview is taken by the embassy. So here all the most of the processes are done by the embassy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, today we will explain you about the embassy process because the embassy process is starting um, right now. It's right. from April. So uh, we want everybody to prepare for the embassy recommended route and how to prepare for university recommended route, we'll tell in the end. Okay, so right now let's focus on the embassy process. Yeah. Yeah, so so the simple, yeah, yeah. simple flow of MEX application, which is something that is very common for both the tracks, only except a few steps. So what happens is you get an application deadline time. Okay, this is the, you, you get an application uh, release date where they 
provide you with the application form, the extra documents that you have to fill. So, and you, they give you a deadline. So deadline is usually like uh, third week of May. Uh, so you get about two, two to three weeks to prepare all the documents and complete the application form and you submit it to the embassy. So the application, there's application submission. Then there is first screening. This screening is done by the embassy, like I mentioned again. That screening can be can be like it's the the method of screening is never disclosed, so it's on the discretion of the embassy. But we do have an idea how or what are the basic idea that um and that would go in first screening. Second, you will get a call or email for the written exam. So you will be given a date, and that would be in a very short notice, which is like one week or ten days. You will be called for the written exam. And that written exam is usually in Delhi, in JNU. This written exam is for like mostly for undergraduate students. You have to give subject exams. For research students, you have to give English and Japanese. So about Japanese, we'll mention uh, the details later. And after you've got done with the written exam, you get, uh, if you are shortlisted, you're called for an interview. And then that interview is around the first week of July. And the written exam is around end of June. This is how it goes. And after the interview, there is a a second screening that happens again in silence and then you are notified whether or not you are shortlisted for the MEST application. So this is the proper flow of how an application goes. Yeah. So um, just to summarize, you submit your application. The first step is document screening. They check your documents. If you pass that step, then you have a written exam. If you pass your written exam, then they have an interview. If you pass your interview, then there's a final document screening. And after that, you get the scholarship. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, this whole process does take about eight to 10 months. So yeah. um, right, if you apply in April, uh, you would go next year in April or in October, whichever intake you're comfortable with. So yeah. it takes about eight to 10 months. Yes. Um. And the, okay, the next is what kind of documents you need. Okay, so I will keep it very simple. Um, or the first thing that you need to submit is an application form. The embassy will like, upload that application form on their site, on their website. So you submit that. The next thing you need is a letter of recommendation. That This letter of recommendation is, is you're going to get it from your principal or your uh, dean or your head of department or your professor or something like that. Other than that, you need academic transcripts. Okay. Um, academic transcripts are like, for example, if you are applying for masters, right? So you, you need academic transcripts of all your eight semesters or six semesters of all of your undergraduate. And uh, you also need to submit a health certificate form. This is basically, it has information about, for example, your blood blood levels. So this particular form, you need to go to a doctor and the doctor will fill this form for you. So these are the four basic documents you need. Um, for research, yeah, for research students, there's an additional uh, uh, thing that you need to provide with a graduation certificate. For example, if you are on your in your third year of uh, uh, degree program, if supposing if you are doing BTech and you applied in the third year, you applied for next in your third year, of course, you don't have a degree of graduation, but you can provide, um, there's a provisional degree that you get, um, a certificate that shows that you have completed all the semesters or whatever semesters you have completed. You need to submit that. And, and the only difference, the biggest difference between undergraduate students and research students is research students has, have to additionally submit a research plan and, and uh, mention about your past and present field of study. So that will include all the internships that you have done, any mm -hmm. research programs that you have done. And research plan will include what are you going to do your master's on. So you need to, uh, you need to understand that the master's degree in Japan is also very research base so you need to know the topic and what topic you want to do for example if you're computer science you need to if you want to do something in ai then you need to like mention something about or draft a research plan it should not be detailed but it you should give a basic idea of what you want to do so that is very important for research students who are applying yeah okay moving on um, yeah, you can, uh, some other optional documents are like, you can submit your JLPT certificate. Your, you can submit your TOEFL certificate. Um, you can also submit, um, any kind, any other language proficiency that you have. Um, or yeah, things like that, just to like improve your, um, application. 
but uh, they are not mandatory. The, these are the mandatory documents which you have to submit. And these are the optional documents. Okay. Yep. Um, screening, examination and interview. So what, yeah. So what kind of um, examinations do you yeah. have to, what we will now explain the written exam part for masters. Yeah. The written exam is very simple. It's only Japanese and English. That's it. But for undergraduate, the written exam is different for, for sciences students, for humanities students, it's different for everyone. For sciences students, the written exam is mainly of physics, chemistry, maths, English, and Japanese. And uh, uh, it varies if you are from uh, humanities, then it's usually like English and uh, some mathematics as well. An easy level of mathematics and Japanese. Yeah, right. 10th standard. So people who say that uh, I'm from humanities background and I don't know how, what, how to uh, write a maths exam, the maths level will be 10th standard NCRT level. So if you just study like Ardi Sharma from 10th standard, um, I think it is enough uh, for you to answer something because you that's basic maths that you would know. Yeah, but this is the written exam is um, not very difficult, but because the seats are very few, right? So that's why you need to perform better than others. Yeah. So, uh, but in my opinion, the written exam was very easy, not that difficult. Um, so you can do it. But the main thing is that you need to be better than the other candidates. So that's why that's what makes it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, yeah, that's pretty much these are the exams you need to study for. Um, um, yeah, so we have already explained uh, this timeline. By the way, this presentation was made by somebody. So it's, it's just like really a very good presentation. I just noticed. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, yeah, I just want to address one question. Can uh, can Jay go back to the previous slide, please? Yeah. So someone mentions where do M Tech sit in this hierarchy? So just to know that PG postgraduate for any kind of studies, be it like uh, postgraduate or masters in uh, law, masters in uh, health sciences, masters in geophysics, masters in uh, or or civil or civil engineering, masters in civil engineering, everything falls under research students. So that's a very different idea of what research student means which i will explain so if you do if you talk about mtech mtech will also fall under research student and the reason why the research student is mentioned is jay can go to the next slide now yeah so when you are doing your um when you get accepted and everything else is done when you go to the university you have to like either you you have to give an entrance exam in the university that happens when you go to japan okay but before the entrance exam you have to serve a six month period of a non-degree student which in this during this period you can either study japanese or you can prepare for your entrance exam so that is why when 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 the applications open even if you're applying for masters you always fall under the category of research students that is the main idea but at the end, you will finish the degree with a master's degree, of course. To summarize, everybody until a UG uh, undergraduate is bachelor's. After undergraduate, master's is known as research students. So if you want to do M-Tech, for example, both of us, both me and Samriddhi are doing master's only in sciences, MS. So that is known as research students. Okay. Even PhD. PhD yeah. also falls under yeah. research students. Even PhD is known as um, research students. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, these are um, some other notes we, which, you, which you need to take care of. The first is how to fill your application form. And the second is how to attach your documents. So if a lot of people have doubts like how do we submit our documents? How do we get our documents attested? And how do we fill your documents? Should we type them or should we write them by hand? So and how do we send them? So these things we will answer eventually. Yeah. And um, the deadlines, like uh, the application deadline, this was the real time deadline that was there last year. So people who are going for going for who received the MEC scholarship and going in 2024, their application deadlines were until 15th May. So the application opened in end of April, if I remember. So you have 15 to 17 days. In those days, you have to finish your application deadline. For undergraduate student, it was 29th May. One thing I have to mention that before the screening, there is a preliminary 
screening that happens for research student so for research student you have to either you have to fill a preliminary form and submit it via email once you are shortlisted then you fill the real application and post it but as for undergraduate students they directly fill the form attach documents and post it so there's a very uh, detailed uh, minute details that you have to keep in mind which is very important yeah. but yeah you will get more information we will like mention it in due time but these are some of the things that people do not focus on but they should focus on so like we just mentioned the small things that matter yeah Okay, so let's take one question at the each time. Can you survive in Japan with the stipend money? Yes. <laughs> yes, we are surviving. Uh, let's, no, let's that, that, exactly, you showed yeah. everything. <laughs> okay. Suspense. Bam. Okay. Um, can you do part-time jobs in Japan? Yes, you can do part-time jobs, although you have like a, a cap of some hours, like 50, 40 to 50 hours per week. 28, um, right? It's 28. 28? Yeah. Oh, it's, so 28. It's, 20, it's 28 hours per week. So uh, you can do part-time jobs. That part-time jobs can be working in convenience store or do, being a language teacher or being a tour guide. Or also you some people also do part-time jobs in the university. So you can do that and get some extra money. Yeah. If you do part-time jobs, I think you can make approximately 100 and... Uh, you can make approximately 100,000 yen per month. Extra. One lakh yen. Yeah. yeah one lakh yen. Yeah. yeah. Do you need IELTS and TOEFL? So you don't. So for, first of all, for undergraduate, you do not need them at all. For masters, sometimes you need to give TOEFL after coming to Japan. For example, I gave TOEFL. Um, after after getting accepted for the scholarship because your university says that you do need to have the minimum marks in TOEFL. But having TOEFL or JLPT in your application will definitely give you some advantage. But we did not have it um, yeah. while when we were applying. So it's not a very big advantage, but it does matter some. Okay, depends. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Do I need to know Japanese to study in Japan? Yeah, go for it. Oh, so actually, it also depends upon what subject you are studying. So, for example, if you have, uh, if you're studying subjects like AI or this, especially for masters and PhD students, research students, if you want to do your research in any topics like AI or uh, like topics like geophysics, maths, then you don't, you can do your research in English language. But if you are want, if you want to study, for example, Japanese literature, then you need to study Japanese you can go there and like appear for JLPT exams and um, study yeah so it again depends I hope the answer is depends I don't know not, not really <laughs> okay not really I wrote not really is for undergraduate students as well because the reason I wrote not really is because when you are writing your written exam that time you are supposed to sit for a Japanese exam but that but sitting for the Japanese exam doesn't mean that if you don't know anything you will not get the scholarship it is yeah. just formality that you sit for so, so hmm. um just to summarize you do not need to know japanese before going to japan okay you can give the exam without japanese for example when i gave my mech scholarship exam i left my um, japanese exam score sheet empty because i didn't know any japanese so it's not important to get selected but once you reach japan for undergraduate students you have a one year of japanese preparatory language school you need to attend it for one year, which is also funded by MEX scholarship. Okay. And for master's students, it depends if your course has some Japanese or not. So if you choose good universities like University of Tokyo or like Kyoto University, then you can survive on basically only English and you do not know, you do not need Japanese if your professor can speak English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, we can. Uh, is it okay? Yeah, we can take the questions in the chat box. Uh, we can okay. scroll up. Uh, Jay, I can ask you questions and you can try to answer that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Apart from the university, we mentioned Prat Pratyush asked this question. Apart from university, we mentioned in the application form, and if we are, didn't get accepted by the professors, is it possible to get selected if we 
if we get accepted by professors of other universities in other applications. So basically what he mentions is if the professor's name that we mentioned does not accept me, can I go to a university where some other professor whose name is not written in the application has uh, accepted me? So um, first of all, you need you can submit up to three names. So if either one of the professors accept you, you're good to go. Okay. Also, second thing, basically when you're applying for masters, right? For undergraduate, you do not need any professor. For masters, um, after clearing your interview, you will contact professors in advance and they will uh, check, check your resume and check your research plan. And then they will reply to you if they accept you or not. And after getting confirmation from two or three professors, you are required to tell the embassy which professors have accepted you. So basically you will submit the form only after someone has accepted you, not before that. So you will get acceptance from a professor below first. And after that, you will have to submit their name. Yeah. Is it mandatory for BTEC students who are applying for MTech to have a research paper in their hand while applying? No. Basically, a research paper is not like you have to publish a research paper. A research paper is basically just like, uh, for example, uh, right now I want to uh, do research in IoT. Uh, okay, I, I want to do research in 5G. So I would just write my idea, my abstract of what I want to do on a Google Doc. I would write my abstract and the, the timeline which I will follow, why my research is good for India, why my research is um, good for the whole world and how I can impact it, what kind of impact it will make. This is basically like a report. And this is known as your research plan and your research thesis. Yeah. And uh, just for one um, mention that we have to mention that uh, if you are in your fourth year, okay, like your final year, you do write a final year project, right? Which you completed under a supervisor. You may or may not publish that. So that report or that project that you have written, the thesis of that project becomes the research that you have done. So research here means any work that you have done in details is called research here yeah. in japan so you can like write the abstract of the thesis that is of the project that you have done in your fourth year that is a very compulsory part that you have to write because that is something that is very important yeah um so there's a question how many times can we give mixed oh any number of times but yeah, um, yeah you can give mixed as long as you want to give it but I would suggest to not waste a lot of time on MEX. Uh, just like one or two attempts is more than enough because MEX is a very long process, right? Each attempt takes approximately one year. So it's like you will waste a lot of time. Yeah. Um. Correct. So Navneet says that I want to do master's in history from Japan. So do I have to get acceptance from a professor from Japan before applying for MEX? If you are applying via MEX, right, that is when you do need to get acceptance. But right now, you don't have to worry about it, Navneet. Right now, you just apply for MEX, you give the written exam and you give the interview and MEX will tell you when to contact professors. Yeah. That is when you worry about this. Right now, you just have to focus on the written exam. But if you apply privately, right, not through MEX, then there are different methods. You can check out each university's website and they, they must have posted how to join their university but okay. through next you don't need to worry about it right now you need to worry about it after clearing your interview correct um so people are asking uh about any project if for example if you have done your project in second year that also comes under abstract of research thesis that you have done if you have done a project um if you have done a project and uh, like any internship or any report project that also comes under research paper. You should not mention research paper, it's research because you have not published it. Yeah. So you need to just mention the abstract yeah. of, uh, yeah. Um, there are some more questions. Um, BTEC comes under which section while filling the application form? BTEC comes under which section? UG. Which section? Um, so ah, UG, information, UG. Engineering. information engineering. Uh, no, BTEC. Yeah, uh, BTEC is in, doing bachelor's in computer science, right? So no, it's a, BTEC, just BTEC. BTEC can be any BTEC. No, it falls under UG category, right? Not uh, yeah, yeah, Of course, like BTEC, even civil engineering is BTEC. Okay, I, I yeah, forgot. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, BTEC is just bachelor's, bro. 
uh, if you want to it what kind of technology you choose if you do it in uh, computer science you you choose the option of field of study as information engineering if you choose if you want to go in the civil engineering or something then you choose another major field of study so i think there's like a list of subjects which you can choose uh, it is um, mentioned on your application form it is like for computer science you can choose the major field of study as computer science for civil engineering for electrical there is uh, there is another field of study so it depends on what kind of studies you want to pursue yeah uh, there is one question that uh, there is a there is a applicant who's currently in japan and is working but he wants to apply uh, to study via max scholarship so he's asking about uh, how should he or where should he fill the health form does he have to go back uh, no, no 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 you don't have to go back on the only requirement for applying for max is you should not be a japanese citizen actually i know one person who is who was japanese but she gave up her nationality just to get the scholarship and after getting the scholarship like after her studies she she like uh, applied for nationality again so if for your health form you just have to go to any other regular doctor and no such um, no you don't have to go anywhere but i i i suppose that if you are if you are giving for example health form okay like he's residing in uh, japan but for the when you get a call for the interview that time you have to go back to your country's embassy and then give uh, the the entrance uh, the sorry the entrance exam as well as the interview yeah so that is very important yeah the entrance exam is not online so you yeah. have to go to delhi or mumbai or wherever for interview maybe it's online that you have to check if it's online then you can give it that way or else you have to go to india okay so there are, we'll take two more questions and then we can take all or rest of the questions at the end okay. uh, one question is that uh, someone has asked about uh, eligibility or doing uh, japanese studies like or like appearing or applying for japanese study students for example if a person is studying japanese currently and he wants to be a japanese study student like someone who gets max scholarship under japanese study student is he or she or available uh, yeah of course you are you eligible so basically japanese studies is like um, just linguistics right so you can apply in the social sciences department in humanities and you can come here and study japanese so basically i think from delhi university we have some people who are studying japanese so i you actually have like an advantage of getting max scholarship because you already know some japanese so you can apply for um interpretation you can apply for translation major field of study you can also apply for language or maybe policy or international relations or something like that yeah so uh, people were asking any specific areas for the entrance exam like i mentioned again for undergraduate you just have 11th and 12th standard uh, physics chemistry maths if you are from science if you are humanities it is not recommended to leave the maths paper empty because you have studied maths till 10th so i suppose that the paper the question paper level for maths for science and humanities are definitely going to be different so i'm pretty sure you can answer those questions so you don't have to leave empty because if you leave empty and some Someone who's applying in humanities have written something. That person has a chance of getting in. So please give your best. And second question is like, how do we conduct research? Like someone, someone is confused about research period, and that in that research period, studying Japanese and also studying for entrance. So it, I think it's the 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 idea of studying for entrance exam and doing Japanese. can go hand in hand like i don't know how to verbally explain but i have done that mm. i entered in april and i my entrance exam was in august and i was preparing for my entrance exam japanese classes are just for like 2 or 3 hours every 2 or 3 uh, days a week so you can do that as well as you can also go back to your lab and go back to your library and study and you can easily clear that so uh, i don't think it's going to be a problem yeah, yeah. i didn't even join the la japanese language classes they are actually optional. optional yeah they are optional so if you don't want to join the la japanese language classes and you want to focus on your because my graduate school uh, the university of tokyo graduate school written exam is very difficult so i wanted to focus on that so i did not apply for the japanese language school and you can just um, tell them that you are not interested it's fine yeah. um, um 
Yeah. Is college COT and specialized training the same? It's different. Please tell the difference. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's completely different. Um, so undergrad is undergrad. COT is also an undergrad level degree, but it takes five years instead of four years. Um, and when it comes to specialized, specialized is a certificate course. So basically you um, come to Japan and you go to a specialized institute. You go to an institute which is specialized for something like manga or something like animation or something like computer graphics or game development. You go there and you intensively study just that. And after doing that particular course, you can enroll in the university and get an undergraduate degree. But specialized is like focusing on a specialization. A lot of people who apply for animation or manga or translation, they choose the specialized course. Yeah. We also have like a mentoring program. And this year, I think three people got selected for a specialized course. So it's very famous, actually. It's very famous and it's very like it's for people who exactly know which which yeah. topic they want to do. Uh, yeah. And so someone who Soumya mentioned that she's doing English honors right now from Delhi University. And she's also studying Japanese and have completed N5 and appear for N4. So she's asking if she wants to study Japanese literature through MEXT. The, will she need to go through undergraduate for this? I don't think so. If you are in your second or third year, if you apply right now, you can directly apply for master's in, in Japanese literature since you already have Japanese language uh, N4. Um, for lab, Japanese literature, I think you need N3 or N2, which you can definitely convince your professor um, to that you can do that. And so you should know that if you want to study Japanese literature, most of your studies would be in Japanese. Yeah. So you can you don't have to study undergraduate again. You can directly apply for master's program. Yeah. yeah. Best, uh, what we would advise to Soma is like, you do not apply. You right now focus on learning Japanese and yeah. do your undergraduate. And yeah. after your undergraduate, you can apply for master's, uh, master's degree in Japanese because until that time, you will already know some Japanese. Good level of Japanese. Yeah, and for people are uh, asking for automation, do Japan has good colleges? Japan is the world for automation. Everything is automated because of lack of human power. So I think uh, if you want to study AI, robotics, technology, um, computer science, VR, AR, automation, I think it's the perfect place to be here. So I think you don't have to have any second doubts about it. Yeah. So he is asking whether his parents can come and stay with him while he's working in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they can. Uh, they can. They can come and visit you for a period of three months, but then they have to go back again and then apply for visa again, and then they can come back again. So mm -hmm. yes, they can visit you for only for maximum of ninety days at at a time. Yeah. Okay. Um. So guys, um, this was all the basic information that we had to give about Mex. So in order to clear the Mex exam. Honestly, this much information is more than is enough. Okay. But if you are um, much more serious about getting the scholarship and if you want to know like intricacies and you want to talk to us more in detail for that, we also have like a mixed mentoring program, uh, which is basically like we have a community uh, of people, approximately 50 people. And we just like um, have regular chat sessions and regular meetings in which we basically um, tell you how to write your application form uh, and write your letter of recommendation, how to write your research plan. We also provide documents of other scholars and what they wrote. And we also take like mock interviews. So maybe we can explain somebody can start. Yes. So just to give you a bit, a bit of statistics, we just started it last year. And unfortunately, we... Um, not unfortunately, it was fortunate for students, but was a bit crazy for us because we uh, became very optimistic and opened up just when the applications opened in May. So we took in about 30 students uh, and in 15 days time, we helped them with the application form. That is, we checked, the we conducted classes, we checked the applications, uh, we pre prepared them with the documents and everything. So it was really good response. And we had about 15 students who cleared the uh, application, uh, 15 to 16 students who cleared the application process 
and uh, for undergraduate i think seven to eight people wrote their written exam and out of which there were three people who appeared for the interview who gave there were three people who shortlisted for the interview and they uh, we took their mock interviews and all three of them got into mex scholarship so it was a really nice response and some and we so we thought we should extend uh, this idea for more number of people this year um and so the response was really great and you know it's very it's very difficult to actually help you with or like you know like transform your normal application to a really good application for that we need a lot of brainstorming depending on what what subject you are studying so when you write an answer about uh, there are a few questions they will ask you okay why do you want to study in japan what is the uh, what is the reason that you're going to japan and not us or europe the most common answers or good answers you can say is okay the anime the more opportunities the culture of japan is great there's advanced technology j pop so these do you not realize that these answers are answers which they already expect so when they get those answers in their ears they are like okay okay this is this is something that we already know what else so what differentiates a good answer from a best answer is the way you present or you you story tell your motivation so you should have like um a, a storytelling knack which actually gives you an edge where you for example if you have like how this is an answer this is a an answer that someone has uh, written uh, where wrote. okay so then maybe jack can explain why he wrote why, what he wrote okay okay <laughs> so, um Uh, basically everybody says um, these things right these are very common and very boring what you need to uh, you need to answer it in a way such that like you're telling a story um, so what i did was like you know i introduced a real life person as my inspiration i was interested in ko university so what i did was i looked up the founder of ko university and i mentioned how i was so inspired by that person because he is responsible for um, internationalizing japan with india and what kind what kind of an important role he played so that's why i basically i introduced a character and a motivation and a real motivation not just mo normal boring motivation like anime or something like that you need some serious motivation and something different and something unique mm -hmm. uh, so i mentioned a particular inspiration with me then i mentioned about what he did and why he inspired me also i try to mention something unique in a way that some kind of event i participated in it so for example the embassy of japan uh, has regular events like a photography contest or this japanese language contest so i mentioned that i also participated in those events and i really like the culture of japan so everybody usually says that they like the culture of japan but i supported my statement with an event that is what makes an answer much better to yeah. others and other than that some words like strength and and then um never giving up how japan is an ideal place so these are some of the things you need to mention in order to make sure that your answer stands out with other normal and boring answers yeah correct so just to uh, give an uh, give what i also mentioned was that i am studying geophysics which is basically about earthquakes so uh, it is well known that in japan there are so many earthquakes that happen on a regular basis from a magnitude of 3 to 4 uh, and there are big earthquakes that have happened which have like you know the 2011 earthquake that also caused a tsunami so it is very inspiring that how japan builds and rebuilds itself from any natural disaster and it is such a great example of and that japan teaches to the world that you cannot if you cannot like um, obstruct or if you cannot avoid a natural calamity you should learn to live with it or you you should know how to like resist it and sustain with it so you know there are few things that you have to mention to the because at the end of the day the people who are taking your interview are from are basically people who are ja japanese like japanese um work in the japanese embassy so there'll be one japanese uh, person who's like the first secretary uh, and the one there'll be one person indian representative who's also working in the japanese embassy so they know very pretty much lot of things about japan so if you mention the details they are very 
in happy to know that you are not only just i have you just not only know the idea of japan but you are very deeply invested and know the details so that is how you you know uh, impress in your first uh, presentation yeah okay other than that um, there are others this so basically in 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 your application they will ask you questions like how can you contribute to japan why did you choose this particular field of study and why do you only want to study medicine in japan and uh, what are your achievements what are your weaknesses so there are like approximately 15 questions which are different and the answers of each question is different for everybody if i am applying for computer science and i need to then i need to frame my answers related to the computer science degree so similarly you need uh, you need to have an idea of what you are applying for and how you can answer these questions very well and this is basically what we do in the mentoring program is that we look at what you have done in your past and based on that we try to modify your application form your letter of recommendation your research plan such that you have a much better application okay um and yeah these are some of like the hardcore benefit hardcore details that you must focus on if you want to get the scholarship because guys this is what makes the difference as i have said a lot of people apply but very few get selected like approximately 3000 people applied during my time and only three or four people got selected so everybody can answer questions of the english exam and the maths exam so they, because they are easy what separates is if you focus on writing a good letter of recommendation if you focus on choosing a good university if you are able to find a suitable professor and how how what kind of your performance you have done in a written exam how have you written your essays and how confident you are in your interviews right so these are the kind of questions which we will be explaining in our program because they are different for everybody right yeah um yeah so uh, this is uh, the mixed mentoring program for students who are sincere and they want to apply for the max scholarship what we will be doing is we will be, we will be taking mock interviews and we'll give you a list of all the questions which were asked we will also uh, assist you in enhancing your application form and your essays and your uh, application form and letter of recommendations we will also tell you which kind of university you should aim for and which kind of professor would be suitable and how to find a professor and what kind of um, email should you send to them and what kind of details you should mention about yourself uh, also we also tell more information about other scholarships and other internships for example i have done meti internship japanese meti internship i have also done nig research internship and uh, utrip so uh, i can also give you more details about how to get these internships in our particular program um other than that yeah somebody can click this yeah so like i mentioned in the beginning that we chose approximately 20 to 25 students because you know uh, it's not possible for us to of us because we are also people who are doing research by max and um so we do try because we know that the, the community here is not that strong so we want more people from max to 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 come by max scholarship and come and study in japan we want to make a community so we chose approximately 20 25 students last year and we again we went through all the application forms and everything and approximately 15 students were shortlisted for the written exam now we do not teach you physics chemistry maths because that is something that is your arena something that you have studied for 16 years we cannot teach you that in two two weeks so but we can tell you what are the what are the topics that can come what has come in the past how to write an exam what are the times what are the time limits that you get and from that some people we have we we were able the five people were shortlisted for the interview and five or five out like four four people were shortlisted for the final screening and got into mixed approximately after getting some people they think that okay maybe iits are better for them so they kind of do opt out of mixed scholarship but that is a person i i have friends who are uh, chose next over iit <laughs> like, yeah that is also there so there are two uh, kinds of people i also have another friend who came to uh, japan with me and he got admission for in bits pilani 
Yeah. But he opted out and came to Japan with me when I was an undergrad. But anyways, guys, um, basically what Samriddhi said is we are only two people and we do not accept a lot of students. Right now, we already have approximately 25 students and we can accommodate maybe another 15, maximum 15 or maybe 16. So um, if anybody is interested in order to sign up for this, um, we will uh, send the website details and we Samriddhi will we will send a Google form. You can submit that form. But right now, let's have another Q&A, Samriddhi. And yeah. in the end, maybe like... So, uh, maybe we can show the next slide. Uh, next slide. And... Yeah, yeah, this we'll, this is like I've already mentioned. And this I'll mention in the end. Yeah. Um, so if you have... Uh, this was the embassy recommended route, right? If yeah. you want to apply for um, university, then we have already done a webinar on that. It's on uh, a channel called Mishu in Japan. We'll send us mm -hmm. the link in the Zoom chat right now. But uh, you can, to know more about the university recommended, you can uh, watch this uh, this webinars. Um, right now, let's, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll send the link in yeah, the- Yeah, I'll, I'll send it, you can we continue. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can take the Q&A. Yep. Yeah. It is mandatory to have some internships. Um, no, but yeah, that's what that's what matters, right? It is not mandatory, but you should have some good internships. Before, while I was applying, I already had good internships. So um, that is what you need to focus on. Internships related to Japan. So there's this internship called Beatty Internship, which I think benefited me a lot. So um, you can also apply for that. And if you get the get that internship, then it would look really good on your resume. For Japanese studies, what should we prepare for the most? Um, for Japanese study, what should we prepare for the most? Uh, Japanese. You don't need Japanese if you are not applying for social sciences, but just focus on JLPT. As long as you have a JLPT certificate, it's good. But yeah, for Japanese, if you if you want if you want if you're talking about the Japanese written exam, right? It's it's a very technical um uh, technical question, and I do not want to go into too much details. But like it, but in the program we have like a whole video which is focused on how to get the Japanese uh, how to clear the Japanese written exam. Yeah, uh, someone is mentioning that uh, the interview will be in Japanese. No, the interview is in English. Yeah. Uh, you do not have to give the Japanese give the interview in Japanese. Of course, questions like can you introduce yourself in Japanese? How much can how much can you speak Japanese? Are you willing to study Japanese? So there are these questions that they uh, ask you. But the whole um, interview is in English, so you don't have to worry about that. Um. Yeah, can you take questions for a while? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, I have sent the YouTube video as well as the form, but I will keep sending it again. So it I'll, send it, I'll, send, I'll just send it and pin it after taking like six questions so you can take the questions right now. Yeah, so uh, you have finished two projects under your belt. Of course, how, whatever projects that you have sent, you can you can obviously like um, use, the, you write that in your application form. That is not a problem. Um uh okay so where can you get past questions for ug science okay so we have a once you join you can get it online also but once you join the can you send the links again okay cool uh, just a second, the link to the form i have sent the link to the form um and you can scroll up and see the videos so if you are uh, so if you join the MEX mentoring program, we send out a Google link, which has all the documents that you need, all the recordings as well, where we have explained things and also past question papers as well, but you can get it online. Um, if you know four to five languages, we'll give it you a test. So even if you know four to five languages, at the end of the day, the language that is tested is Japanese and English. So make sure that your english the paper that you are appearing for english like you know you are we tend to make very small silly mistakes don't do that like you know questions like have has uh, them there like there are some questions with pronouns and some like verbs also so do, so those are the small mistakes that we do so make sure you don't do that if you want to pursue graduation in biology again like i mentioned you need you, need, you have to give an exam in physics uh chemistry and biology if i'm not wrong you have that in the website yeah, um yeah so Sounds like compiling and making making a big message 
Okay. Uh, you're pursuing masters in Japanese yeah, and currently in first year, am I eligible for? Yes, of course, you are eligible. And if you, I think if you're masters in Japanese, then you can apply in first year. And by the time you finish in second year, uh, you can appear for the, you can, uh, you can apply this year and then finish off next year. You can. Okay, so again, this question, if you are only interested in studying physics and you have three options, there's a reason why they ask you three options. So you have to give three options. So even if you are, you can, the reason why you want to study physics, that answer can be very, very like um, solid, which actually specifies that you are very interested in physics. But apart from physics, the two or other two columns, you have to mention any other subject. It can be like mathematics or it can be anything else, computer science, but you have to mention three subjects. You cannot mention physics in all three columns. Uh yeah, actually, in your second year. So, if you want to apply in my experience, I'll be able to join. So, uh, Sh Shiva, I can, if I can call you Shiva. So, if you want to be in the community, uh, you can go to the form. In the form, there's a WhatsApp group, which has about nearly 300 students who are, those students are people who are also in the batch who are in the mentoring batch or they plan to appear later. So you can be a part of the WhatsApp community and get the updates and information for upcoming webinars. You can sign up. There's a Facebook uh, community as well. And whenever you want to join, you can just drop us a message and you can just fill the complete the registration and join us. How long is the mentoring program? So the mentoring program is like... Um, it's it begins so we have already started asking people so we accept all around the year we accept students all around the year and we keep conducting some q and a sessions and it is until the time that you actually get your mixed results so it's not like so once you enter the mixed mentoring program if you want to apply two times three times you don't have to pay again or you don't have to like do anything directly again uh you can just be a part of it and we so it. it's just like i just want to like briefly tell you something that you know the reason why we want to create this community but it does not guarantee we don't guarantee okay you will get into mixed we are just trying to give you an extra edge over uh, any other students who are blindly applying so that your at the end of the day people are going to see your application if you have worked for two years if you for example if you are currently in your second year and you want to know that what should I do in the next coming year so that my application is strong? So we there are students who are there who are applying next year. We tell them to do do a internship or appear appear for some courses or some like uh, training programs to strengthen your application form. Okay, so we really want to help you a lot, and we really go through the application form according to what you provide us. Okay, and we really wish that you know. The ideal situation is that we wish that everybody gets in, okay? But even if you don't, we do some sort of motivation, give you some motivation to apply elsewhere in Japan. There are a lot of other scholarships as well. So uh, just keep be motivated. And if you want to join us, where you want to be in a community where there are people who also are very serious in applying make scholarships. So last year, there were people, the 10 to 12 students who were, short, who were shortlisted for written exam used to conduct a Zoom meetings among themselves and study and do some study sessions, the 10 to 12 students from our community community so that's what i want to mention that you know if you want to be in among people who are as serious as you then yeah are we supposed to take egu exams to enroll for japanese colleges see egu is again it's up to you i think egu is very expensive also if I'm yeah, yeah don't do it unless you're like really rich it it has nothing to do with uh mixed if you are going to japan to study privately uh that's when you uh, yeah. apply for you eju 12th class standard. Okay, so you don't have to submit uh, certificates from 1 to 7. 9 to 12 or 10, 11, 12 is also enough. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, last five questions. Maybe four. What transcripts are your report cards? It's like 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, your report cards which you got. That's what that's called transcripts. Which mention your marks. What is Japanese students? Can you please explain this? Uh, Japanese study students, people who want to study Japanese in Japan are Jap Simran. Okay, two more questions.
the embassy recommendation the application form is free you don't need to pay any money that's the best part because it is just a scholarship and the application form is free because they are just going to test you on the basis of your um, your merit okay yeah not not 1 to 12 only 9 to 12th or like 9, 10 11 12 class 1 nobody is going to ask what you did in class 1 ram uh, university track is not for um, ug university track is only for pg ug students can only apply via embassy yeah Also, there are some uh, there are some universities which give some scholarship for undergraduate students correct so yeah. you can do it's not for every uh, subject for example kyoto university there is there for like environmental and civil engineering so you get for undergraduate only so you have it's very university specific for ug but for masters you have embassy track and university track okay guys i think that is more than enough questions we are running out of time guys thank you so much yeah. for joining in from different universities just reminds of of our college times and uh, all the best and good luck for your semester exams or uh, other exams as well thank you for joining in and hope you all get a very good uh, response and i hope to see you most of you in japan next year maybe next to next year okay thank yes. you bye bye take care goodbye